Hey folks, how's it going? How's your Sunday night? That good, eh? Hey, now don't worry, I'm not going to be drinking any whiskey on a Sunday night because it's the Sabbath. I'm not going to do that. It's against the rules. You know that. Welcome to a Sunday night whiskey talk. Isn't that unusual? Breaking with tradition here. I usually do this on a, a Saturday night. And it's usually mixed in with a bunch of other things. There's a little bit to do with whiskey, which is, I guess is a bit misleading calling it whiskey talk. More talk than whiskey. I usually put in a, whatever else is happening that night, and that tends to be a hockey game, so no hockey game tonight. You, you call it evolving. <laughs> this is just the uh, polite way of saying I didn't know what I was doing. I still don't, but I'm trying something different here. The five whiskies that I've done so far, I want, I've been, you know, <laughs> having a, a few of an evening and I wanted to see if I had the same, if I was having the same experience, whether I still liked the ones that I thought I liked back then, whether I kind of grew in love with a few that I thought were maybe not quite so good. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go over these five again. I'm going to give you an updated version of what I think of them now, introduce you to the new whiskey that I have, which is a rather special one and talk about the year that that one was actually bottled, which was a very important year. So it's all exciting stuff. Welcome to the show. So we're going to bash through these pretty quick, right? Here we go. First one, Tomatin, 12 years old. That's it in focus. And you know what? The whiskey isn't in focus, I'm afraid. Nice little segue there. Eh? I didn't really care for it when I first tried it. And um, it's not much better now. It's just rougher in the edges, that's all it is. So it's 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 okay, but I'm not going to be going out of my way to buy this one again. So it remains one of my least favourites out of the five that I've done. They're Irish. Writer's Tears. I think there are many different types here. This one, the Copper Pot. What are we sitting at here for the Writer's Tears? 52.75. Great. That's a great price for this whiskey. Still like it. Very smooth. Uh, triple distilled Irish whiskey like they usually are. Uh, this one's very easy to drink as well. I, you know what, I've been staying well clear of it so I hardly, hardly touched it. No, I think I've been trying to get through the Tomatin first so I can get back to something decent. But I like this guy, and I I like it when I review it, and I still like it now. So, thumbs up for your writer's tears. Here's your blended Chevag. And this one, I before I started doing these videos, this was the one that I picked up and I really liked it. There was just something about it that definitely um, struck a chord with me. And I couldn't really work out what it was. So that's when I started poking about the internet and found out a few other people's opinions and uh, learned a wee bit more about it. Only four blends in here, I think. And a few people have said there's Talisker in there, which I can definitely detect in the back end. Somebody says there's Jura in there. No animal. I guess we'll never find out what the other two are. If somebody else knows, you can maybe write in. This one's sitting at about 40 bucks over here in the LCBO in Canada, where I am. And that still represents pretty decent... It's a little bit more than you would want to pay for a blended, but uh, you know, there's something strange though, because I've, I've had a few bottles of, of these and either my palate is changing or there's something changing from bottle to bottle here because the last bottle that I've had here for some reason is not really, there's just something missing. I don't know what, I seem to remember the, the, the first few bottles as being better. So I don't, is that possible that they change from bottle to bottle? Is that, could that kind of inconsistency? I, don't, I mean, it looks like the same. I know I've seen different labels and stuff, but I'm definitely the same whiskey. But for some reason, I'm not quite enjoying this one as much as I did before. And I don't, I have no idea why that is. That's either me or the weather or there's something different with that bottle. That's all I can say. That's your uneducated response for what the hell's going on with that Chevec. But definitely not as good as it was a year ago, although it's still one of my favourites. Is that okay? Is that a de decent comment? Moving on. Urcardu, 12 year old. I think I liked that when I first reviewed it, and I still do. It's very sweet, it's very mild. 
Again, I don't know if this, apart from I like the look of the bottle, I don't think I would ever really go out my way to kind of get try this one again. You know, there's too many out there that I've not tried. And this one, I'll take it off the list and I'll move on. Slightly better than, than your Tomatin, because it's not quite as rough as, as that guy is, I felt. But still, cost 20 bucks more. So it's just, you know, for me, that's a, it's a deal breaker. You're done. <laughs> Sorry. Not going back. Last but not least, your upper lower there, which I think I mentioned in the review, was a gift. And I've been enjoying this gift quite a bit. I thought it was rather spicy. <coughs> That's spicy. When I first tried it, that was my first little uh, throwback of the old uh, upper lower there, and I still think it's on the spicy side. Although it's, it's very nice. I am enjoying this one quite a bit. And uh, so that hasn't changed at all. In fact, I might even like it a wee bit more now. You get kind of used to this thing, right? So your Aber Lauer um, checked out the price of that thing as well at the LCBO. I think the LCBO is the only place I can get whiskey. I haven't checked into where else. I suppose I could go into a, a bar. If the bars were open. I could go in and maybe buy one there, but I'm not an aficionado of this stuff, right? I'm just going to see what they've got on the shelves here. And uh, this is readily available, $65 odds. That's a nice price because I think this one's a little bit st a step above some of the others that I've tried. So still enjoying the old uh, upper lower there. So we'll do a little uh, top five. Reverse order, will we? Fifth place, Tomatin. Not getting it again, sorry. Cardu, number four. I don't think I'll buy this one again either. Doing well so far, eh? Then I'm going to put, oh, you know what? Touch and go between these two. Um, Let's go this guy. Let's put your little blended in there at number three, your Chevegg there. Just something odd about the bottle. Your writer's tears. Number two. Here's your number one out of this batch. Aberlour. And now, let's have a wee look at this whiskey. So let me introduce you to a bottle of Glen Spey. Vintage 1985 independent bottling. So this is my first time of trying a whiskey that's going to be independent bottling. Number 633 of 885 made. This was bottled in Edinburgh. And I checked out the, uh, where this place is, this uh, signatory vintage Scotch Whiskey Company Limited and they're in Leith in Edinburgh, my hometown. Although that's not my part of the city. That's the East End. I'm very much from the West End. And my, my Edinburgh peeps <laughs> will figure that out soon enough. 1985, uh, that's quite the journey. I was still living in Scotland then. That's how long ago that was. I wonder what was all happening in 1985, 1986. Well, thanks very much. You had to remind me of that particular traumatic experience that it was one of the reasons I had to leave the country I think I, I don't think I've ever recovered from that losing the league the last game of the season the last seven minutes of the season Hartman Lothian Football Club this close to winning the league title I was so superstitious for the whole duration of that season went on a winning run that started at about Christmas, didn't lose a game. And I was so superstitious, I kept my Christmas decorations up through the whole winter and <laughs> into the spring. Can you imagine how sad that looked? Taking those dusty, wrinkled balloons off the ceiling in May when the winning streak ended. And they lost the league on the on that Saturday in Dundee, Albert Kidd, that little shit. It must be said, it must be said. 
And then like, the week after that, they go and lose the Scottish Cup final to Aberdeen. It's like within a week, everything collapsed. And fortunately, I wasn't at the game. I had to attend, of all things, I had to attend a an individual counselling weekend retreat in Goldbridge, just outside Edinburgh. <laughs> Can you imagine that? What a mind bend that is. Trust your partner. Because I hear you, I see you. I trust you. Have you any idea what the score is at Dens Park? You know what? I mean, there are some goal difference as well. That's the real tragedy, I think. All they needed to do was tie. They couldn't even do that. They lose 2 0, and Celtic needed to beat St Mirren by, I think, five goals. I think it was like 8 0 at half time. So thank you very much, St Mirren, for helping us out there. That was nice work. Nice work. I think the final score was like 25 nothing, something like that. My brother and sister-in-law, I think, were at Dens Park that day. He couldn't get out of the city quick enough. Both of them. The Tyne Castle tears trickling down the terraces in Tayside was a tragedy. I'll have to get on it. Anyway, but that's what was going on at <laughs> a particular time. 43% as well. I'm changing the subject. 43%. So this is the first time as well it's been over 40%. I don't know how much of a difference this is going to make, but I'm really looking forward to this. Thank you so much to Holly and Chris for giving me this. And as I said, I don't you can't pick this up in the LCBO. So I think they I think they told me that they went to a pub called Feathers, Kingston Road there in Toronto. Told the guy behind the bar, this is what I like. Yeah, the certain flavours and colours and whatnot, feelings, emotions that you get from a whiskey. So this is what we're going to do in the next whiskey talk. We're going to pop the hood on this guy and we're going to have a wee drink together and see what happens, which is what you want when you drink a whiskey. You want something to happen. I don't really dwell too much on the the palettes and the nose and the finish and all that kind of stuff because a lot of it's kind of beyond me to be honest. I'm still finding my way when it comes to that but what I can feel are emotions and memories and stuff and that's what this is providing right now. A whiskey that started its life in Edinburgh when I was still living there playing in bands and all that kind of stuff it's gonna be quite special it's gonna be quite an emotional event when I uh, when I finally crack the lid on this thing and I'm gonna share it over you on the next whiskey talk which will be coming up shortly stay tuned to this channel give us a like if you feel like it subscribe would be even better I'll see you again <laughs>